Hello everyone and welcome back, Dace here. If you enjoyed jumping into medieval fantasy STGs like Dragon Blaze or even Espigaluda 2, you'll be pleased to know Hamster has added Dragon Spirit to their Arcade Archive series. This classic from the late 80s packs a seriously magical punch that will have you feeling like you're heading deep into Mordor. It may not look like much at first glance, but even parts of Mushihime-sama were inspired by Dragon Spirit, so you know there's something worth exploring in this retro title. Today I'll be sharing a little about how the game works and what I think of it in my review of the Nintendo Switch version. With all that out of the way, let's get into this. Dragon Spirit is a vertical scrolling arcade shooter developed and published in Japan by Namco in 1987. The game was eventually ported to the X68000, Atari ST, TurboGrafx-16, and other systems. Dragon Spirit also appears in numerous Namco compilations and received two sequels, Dragon Spirit The New Legend, which came out the following year, and Dragon Saber, released in 1990. At the start of the game, we observe a knight raising his sword to the sky before transforming into a great blue dragon, but there's a lot more to the story than what we see during this brief opening scene. In the ancient past, the sun goddess Arlia sealed away a serpent demon known as Zawel and restored peace to the land. Zawel eventually came back and captured Princess Alicia for sacrificial purposes. Our protagonist knight, Captain Amel, attempted to fight against the demon and his evil forces but was not strong enough. Raising his sword to the heavens, Arlia casts a transformation spell, turning the knight into a dragon so he can rescue the princess. The game plays out over 9 stages and will take anywhere from 35 to 40 minutes to complete. During the run we fly over mountains, dense forest areas, an ocean, a volcanic region, jungle terrain, desert, a glacier, and an ancient temple. There are even two underwater stages that set a deep and dark mood. I won't cover all the enemy types because there are far too many, but we face dragonflies, butterflies, fish, plants, dinosaurs, dinosaur skulls, spirits, bees and beehives, sea creatures, tusked mammals, statues, scorpions, bats, the list is almost endless. Some of the bosses we face are a large wingless dragon, a phoenix, a giant flower, a bone dragon, a spider, and others before our showdown with Zawel. There are also loads of environmental hazards to avoid or destroy when possible, including erupting volcanoes, giant fireballs, ice spikes, wall spears, and vines, to name a few. Your dragon comes equipped with two standard attacks. The first is the flame shot for airborne enemies, and the second is a type of bomb which can be dropped on ground-based units. This is not to be confused with screen-clearing bomb types. Furthermore, you have a health bar displayed in the bottom left corner as well as your remaining lives. You'll see red and blue eggs as you progress through the stages. These eggs can be destroyed to reveal power-ups in the form of orbs, but power-ups can also be found when shooting down flashing enemies. The blue orb will add an extra head to your dragon, giving you double the firepower. A third head is added if a second blue orb is collected. Keep in mind that your hitbox increases with each additional head up to a maximum of three. The red orb is tied to your shot power, which increases after collecting three of these items, and there's a gauge for this on the bottom right side of the screen. The other power-ups include the fire breath, wide fire, homing fire, power wing, magic eye, dia, and earthquake. The Fire Breath is an air attack 16 times stronger than your standard attack. The Wide Fire shoots aerial attacks in three directions, and the Homing Fire eliminates on-screen enemies during a short period. The Power Wing is a temporary invincibility shield allowing you to ram your body into enemies to destroy them. And the Earthquake unleashes a tremor that destroys foes. The Dia is a diamond-like item that adds an extra 100 points to your score, and there's a golden orb worth 10,000 points. As for the Magic Eye, this gives the player a larger light for a short period during the dark underwater stage. The Power Down item degrades your abilities, and if you collect three of the Purple Heart Orbs, you'll get an extra life. One thing I find cool about collecting these is the representation on the bottom left of the screen. Securing the first orb will be displayed as an egg icon. The next will change it to a dragon hatching from the egg, and the third will be a mature adult. With all sorts of enhancements and life-gaining potential, it may feel like you could breeze through the stages, but Dragon Spirit is deceptively challenging and will punish you severely for taking damage. Not only will you lose one of your additional Dragon Heads, but the rank of your firepower will decrease, and you'll return to a checkpoint if losing a life. If you're deep enough in the run when this happens, it can very quickly spell your final doom. While recording footage for this review, I had a very tough time safely navigating sections. I would often need to go over parts numerous times before finally making it through unscathed. The difficulty is incredibly steep. 
To be more specific, Dragon Spirit's greatest difficulties are experienced during the stage portion of each level, and not the boss fights. To be honest, the bosses are actually a breeze and go down quickly as long as you hammer shots into them and don't fumble. Part of the difficulty will also depend on which version you're playing. Dragon Spear comes with both the old and new versions of the game, and there are some significant differences between the two. One of the biggest differences is the character movement speed. In the old version, movement is extremely slow, and if you're moving backward, it's slower than molasses in the winter, so you need to be very cautious about how high up on the screen you go. Your speed feels a lot more reasonable in the new version, and I can see more people enjoying this version specifically because of that. Other things were adjusted, such as collision detection and also granting the player the ability to choose whatever stage they want to begin with at the title screen. In any event, if you successfully bring down the demonic serpent lord, we observe a scene of Alicia breaking free from her prison. Amel returns to human form and the two embrace. The scoring appears to be pretty straightforward, with killing enemies and collecting items at the forefront. There are two score-based extends to earn, which will trigger at one of three potential score totals depending on what you have it set to in the game settings. But on average, the first extend is received at 80,000 points and the second at 180,000 points. And of course, the game includes both high score and caravan modes. The music in Dragon Spirit is easily one of the best things about the game. Shinji Hosoe, also known as Megaten, created some truly impressive tracks offering great depth and mood setting, which add a lot to the overall experience. According to legend, Shinji was originally a graphic designer, but he experimented with adding his own music to the game code. After hearing what he had produced, the development team was so impressed that they made him the composer. Here are some short samples from some of my favorite compositions in Dragon Spirit. The sound effects are what you might expect from the 80s. Despite this being a medieval fantasy, some of the sounds feel like they belong in a space shooter, but at the same time, they still get the job done. In conclusion, Dragon Spirit offers an incredibly creative and diverse experience that has us traversing great locations, confronting tons of enemies and bosses, and also dishes out an intense learning curve. With how brutally challenging Dragon Spirit is, it won't be for everyone. But if you're like me and love having classic arcade shooters on your Switch, this is a solid addition to your personal library. Anyway, that's where I'm leaving off for now. In the comments, let me know if you're aiming to check this one out. Or if you've played it before, what was the toughest stage or boss? And if you enjoyed this video, fling a like our way and subscribe to keep your days STG infused. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.